are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, man, it's I Am Refocused Radio. We have another amazing show, man. We just pile up these shows for y'all, but we appreciate y'all taking the time to listen. You can go to IamRefocusedRadio.com, check out the homepage, check out all the cool guests. But we have another cool guest. Uh, his name is John Katz. And man, topic for today is transforming who you are by, by transforming what you do. And we're going to learn a lot about John and about what he does. So without further ado, John, how you doing, man? Peace. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Man, appreciate you taking time to be on here. So Man, I love the topic that you chose, man. Like when you said in the green room, I was like, wow, this guy already dropping bars. We didn't even do the show yet. So uh, share with the audience a little bit about your career, what you do day to day, and we'll dive into the topic. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm an online coach focusing on helping people transform their lives. And this is something I've done since turning my own life around uh, two and a half years ago. But before that, man, I was playing the same game that most people are. It's a game of ill health mental health, ill physical health, doing a lot of lying, you know, like the typical lies that people engage in around what it is or is not acceptable to do with one's life uh, in terms of alcohol use, drug use, promiscuity, you know, weakness around economic earnings. And then there was a lot of blame around that too. You know, I was casting the finger around at everyone but myself. And it took me reaching a pretty dark place for me to finally realize that the only finger that needed to be cast about was at me and that I was in the driver's seat of my life and I needed to act like it. After I started acting like I was in the driver's seat of my life, man, everything turned around. And this is where I came up with my coaching philosophy that it, it's what we do that makes us who we are. You know, if you look at a man's habits, you can pretty much tell without even seeing anything else about him, where he is and where he's headed. Man, that now that's unique. I never heard it put it that way before. And that's, it's funny, but it's true. And I think it's brilliant. You were casting your finger at other people and set yourself. <laughs> and it's that very easy to do denial. so. Yeah. But yeah, it's very easy to do so. You know, I had all these, as most people do, you know, I had all these ideas about why I was limited, but it was never myself. It was always somebody else's fault. You know, it was these things I had experienced when I was young. It was the ideations of others. I had these wild paranoid delusions that everyone was out to get me in like very specific manners. Like I would spend hours a day most days constructing these false narratives about what other people were saying about me, what other people were doing to try to inhibit my progress. But I was the only one inhibiting my progress. And I was doing that by telling myself awful things about myself. Like I couldn't get in shape. This is how bad it was. I actually told myself that due to my faulty genetic material, I could not get a six pack. So that's that's the individual I was. And that's the individual that most people are. It's not enough for them to blame themselves for their poor physical health. They actually have to blame their ancestors, which is highly disrespectful. And what do you know? After I got my life together, I got ripped. I got a six pack and it was the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah, I love that because it's not just like being accountable for yourself, but it's also like you have to develop this. This is not something that you wake up and say, okay, cold turkey, I'm perfect. <laughs> so explain that for the audience, what that was for you. What was the process like for you to begin, you know, that journey to, okay, I need to break free from this way of thinking and start a new path? hundred percent. So you said two very important things. The first thing you said was use the word development. And the process that I engage in is a program of personal development. And the next thing you said is breaking free. And it's our conduct that allows us to break free. We're either developing ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and we are breaking free of our former level, or we are doing the opposite and we are being caged. You know, we are staying stagnant. We are not developing, we're shrinking, you know, we're regressing. And what allowed me to do this was getting in touch with someone. This is my coach who had this program of intentional living that was actually developed in the penitentiary, the darkest place known. This guy did quite a number of years in uh, very adverse circumstances, the California penitentiary system, which is probably the most adverse place in the U.S., and was able to stay healthy, was able to get in shape, was able to not use drugs, and in doing so, inspired the guys around him. We're talking about 
serious career criminals, uh, people with murder charges, people with aggregated assault charges, uh, um, armed robbery charges, bank <clears throat> bank robbery charges, some real very serious issues, far more serious than any issues that I had had or most people out in the so-called free world have. And how do we stay safe in prison? Well, it isn't by using drugs. It isn't by drinking prison wine. It isn't by you know shooting heroin and uh, blowing coke and smoking speed, all of which are readily available in California prisons and most prisons elsewhere. We do this by adhering to our word and our word is based on our conduct. So it's changing who we are by changing what we do. When you're living in hell and you choose to lead a righteous path, it's going to be incredibly powerful in and of itself. Yes, but of, of course, in and of itself, you know, it brings the self to a higher level, but really it's powerful in its ability to inspire others. And once my coach uh, entered the so-called free world, he started teaching this message of positivity to broken men out here. And I was one of them. I discovered his work online signed up with him and began engaging in a very simple morning process that led to a very simple daily process that allowed me to kick all negative habits within a few months. It has been two and a half years since I've touched alcohol. It's been two and a half years since I've touched drugs. I don't do the promiscuity sleeping around game. That is the biggest way for a man to destroy his soul anymore. I don't disrespect anyone, least of all myself. I've never been closer with my parents. I've never been more economically powerful. I purchased a home in lower Manhattan um, in December of last year. This has been a lifelong dream of mine. In the most expensive real estate market in the world, I was able to carve out a slice of my own simply by running this program. And it's not the program that does it. It's what you don't do. If you are not someone that messes their life up every weekend or multiple times a week like I was, you're going to soar ahead of the competition. So in not drinking and not overeating, in not partying and not lying, I became, I became someone that didn't do any of those things. And what do you know? When the competition is all doing those things, who is going to be able to get the position, the economically viable position? I've held positions in high-level corporate tech roles, and I'm now the director of operations for a local company. These are opportunities I never would have had before, not only because I wasn't worthy of them, but because I told myself I wasn't worthy of them. And why did I tell myself I wasn't worthy of them? Because I engage in worthless acts. The man who continues to degrade himself and others is going to tell himself a very negative story in his head. But the negative story in his head is simply equal to the negativity contained in the acts themselves. What we speak of, we don't only speak of with our words. Our true speech is our conduct. And my conduct was broken. And as soon as I healed my conduct, came to terms with my reality, man, I have flown ahead. And that is what I'm here to speak of today, that everyone's life is blessed with some source of negativity. And I speak of being blessed with a source of negativity because properly processed and turned away, that source of negativity will be your greatest strength. Man, that's good. I mean, everything you said sounds like <laughs> it should be in books or But when you did the process yourself, because only people understand, like what you're saying, it's not something that you just snap your fingers and all of a sudden, like, you know, magic happens. I feel like we don't know how far we're off until we are real with where we're at. And 100%. Then once you find that out, that's when the real work begins. So for you, when you found out where you really were, how did you digest the work ahead that was in front of you in order to get to where you are now? I simply had to look at it as a daily process. I could not look too far in the future or else it became way too painful. And that's where everyone gets caught up. Anxiety creeps in when you think about too far in the future and depression creeps in when you think about the negativity in the past and in focusing on the daily steps that it takes to be a mentally and physically healthy man, an economically powerful man, instead of the result of, you know, wow, how much is this going to take? What is this going to take? I was able to do it, but it took some honesty and there was some pain there. You know, I was living dark. I was living your standard life of lies for so long. I mean, I started drinking at 14 and, and finally put the bottle down at 34 that there's a lot of deprogramming that needs to occur. And, and I hope everyone listening understands in order to get healthy, in order to love your life and to live a life of honesty, you don't need to learn anything else new. Maybe, you know, you might need to learn how to use a food scale and understand the difference between a gram of carbohydrates, protein, and fats, but that's pretty much it. The majority of what you need to do is to unlearn. You need to unlearn that the standard way of being is acceptable because it absolutely is not. Most you know, and I'm speaking to every single person listening, is depressed, anxious, overweight, or some combination of the three. Everyone you know. I'm probably one of the few people you've ever heard of, perhaps Mr. Reed as well, that is none of these things. 
Perhaps. But everyone I know is one or more of these things unless they take the steps necessary to not be. So it's about not doing these negative things. And man, there was pain. Man, there was pain. I would be up early because part of the program is a consistent early wake-up time. And uh, I'd be working out in my apartment. I started out working out. I got fit in my apartment, um, which is something else that people need to unlearn. The idea that you need a bunch of fancy equipment and expensive gym memberships to get ripped. It's total hogwash. And I'd be working out every morning because physical exercise is mandatory. Um, and I'd be crying, man. I would, I would be in tears, real sobbing. You know, by the end of my workouts, I had shed so much of the negativity and gotten to my true self, which was a very wounded man, a real pained individual. And I was pained because I had hurt others. The pain I inflicted on myself only got me partway into the pit of neg- negativity and, and the pit of eventually I was suicidal, so the pit of suicidal ideation. But the real negativity is what I had done to others, mainly in my relationships. And you know, I'd taken advantage of more women than I could count in terms of people who love me and said, you know, they would do anything for me and I wouldn't do a darn thing for them, you know, except disrespect them and cheat on them. And and so it took honesty, a real sense of honesty and, and, um, and love really for myself to bring myself out of that pit of self-hatred. And man, that was a painful experience. But like I said, in my reel today, there's essentially two types of pain. There's the spiritual and emotional pain that men deal with in their hearts and in their souls, Uh, from living a negative lifestyle. And then there's the physical pain of a workout. There's a physical pain of being being really present in what you do every day. Um, And I chose for 20 years the former, the the spiritual pain, the, the pain in my heart, the pain in my soul. And as soon as I chose the physical pain of a workout, I knew that this was the cure for my disease. And um, slowly but surely, my anxiety dissipated, my depression dissipated, my suicidal ideation dissipated. I felt no draw to disrespect women in the way that is encouraged by every single man that you've ever heard of. I felt no urge to do anything other than pursue my passion, which is local food and local foodways. I felt, you know, I just, my conscience became so clear. The call of my conscience, which had always been there, but had been muted by, you know, weekly Coke binges and Uh, tons of cheeseburgers and dating apps and all that stuff. It was finally present. I was finally present with my conscience and I've been walking the path ever since. And it has changed every aspect of my being, every single one. I want to jump in on what you are talking about because I think a lot of times we forget that the pit should be temporary. So when you talk about two different types of pain, I want to say like, you can have the pain of getting out of the pit or you have the pain of staying in the pit, you know? Facts. That's that's the biggest facts right there. And, oh, man, that, if only I heard that from others, that's that's the biggest thing. But what people believe is they identify so closely with their pain, the pain of the pit, then they believe that that is who they are. You know, I had told myself this story that I was this pained individual, not only that I was this pained individual, that I was forever to be this pained individual. And when you tell yourself a story enough times, you begin to believe it. So then I identified with the pain. Well, then healing wasn't for me. If I was healing, then who would I be? You know, there's actually some fear based on, on healing. People are afraid to heal. They're afraid to be well. The people's biggest limiting factor without a question, is they do not believe that they can feel better. The man or woman that believes that he or she cannot feel better will never take a single step towards feeling better. And that's the thing. They want, they almost want it. I almost, I I didn't almost, I identified with being in the pit. I was a pit dweller. I was a negative being. I was dark. I was pained. I was a drug user. I stayed out late. I engaged in all these things. I drank gin. um, I slept around. I had all these things that I identified, you know, being an alcoholic is for a lot of people personality or they believe it to be a personality. And after I shed that and shed the pain, man, the pain of getting out of the pit of really having to think about why I had been through what I had been through, what role I played in it and what I could do to change my life. That was the pain that I had to deal with. That was the pain of the tears. And it's the most blessed thing. You know, I I distinctly remember the first time I cried during a workout. I, um, you know, I, 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 my spirit began to ascend. It's very tough for me to cry anymore. Um, when I was in the, when I was using and I was an emotional wreck, I I cried with some frequency. And then when I started to heal, I cried with great frequency and I pretty much burned the tears out. Now I I wouldn't even know what, I wouldn't know what could bring me to that, that space, but it requires real honesty to get through it, to be willing to emerge from the pit and no longer identify with it. Once again, talking to our guest today, John Katz and Man, talking about transforming who you are by transforming what you do. I mean, man, that is something that is like 
daily maintenance. You just got to do it. And, and it's not even like something you do and, yeah, I don't have to do this no more. <laughs> like a magic pill. Like you just perfect for the rest of your life. It's like anything in life that's worth having. You got to work to make it, you know, be maintained. You know, you, you have to do your part. Anything worth value is going to take time to keep it on track. A hundred percent. You lose your way, you, you lose that value. People get caught up that, you know, everything is so easily consumed these days. You can summon pretty much anything or anyone to your home, consume it, and go on to the next experience. They don't understand that this is a process. This is a process. Healing and being well mentally and physically is a process. So if you aren't engaging the process, you haven't done it. If I were to not do something I said I would, then that's the end of the process. The process must continue for it to be a process. This is not a product. You know, I'm not out here trying to... (laughs) People think that they can sell you a product and that you'll use it and be well. This is a way of being. You're not being well by doing something once or twice. You are being well by doing something every day. And that's what we do on my program. This is a program that I run every day because I know every day will bring me where I need to go internally. And interestingly, as someone who used to travel quite a bit externally, I was somewhat of a nomad. I I engage in kind of work share projects around the world. And when I was running for myself, you know, I had all these external changes and external uh, travels. As soon as I stopped and just started traveling internally, man, that's where the real growth lies. And it, it's from doing the same thing every day. The system at large is, is predicated on poisoning. So they want us to do as many different things every day. So we are as weak as possible every day because we have no adherence to a single thing we do every day. So then we need to rely on them. So if we provide for our mental health every day, then we don't need to use their product that, that they tell us heals mental health. If we provide for our physical health, then we don't need to numb the fact that more than half the people in this country are overweight or obese with disgusting food and whatnot. So we become strong enough unto ourselves that we're able to provide for ourselves through our own internal tools. And we don't need to engage with the negativity that everyone else engages with. I would rather die than blow coke again. You know, I was thinking about this earlier today, you know, because I see that I live in a pretty drug riddled part of town. And you know, I know some of the local dealers because I live here and I I know what's going on. And I I was thinking the number of steps it would take me to reach out to the guys I used to reach out with and engage in the same behaviors. I I think I would rather, I don't think, I know I would rather die. You know, there are some things that once you cross a certain line, you cannot go back. Going back would be death. You know, that would be the end of my life. So it's about commitment. It's about daily maintenance. It's about your habits and it's about really caring about what you do. They, the powers that be would have you believe that what you do doesn't matter. Why do you think that there's all this the money is being made massively on your vices? If if the system cared about what you did, alcohol would not only be illegal, it would be like be the most alcohol is the most destructive force and be treated as such. You know, drugs would be the most destructive force. And there's no prescription drugs. Are you serious? We're gonna legalize these things that cause turn the users into zombies? Like it's outrageous. And that's what my program teaches is in opposition to that. We are the cause of and solution to all of our problems. Thus, we have everything we need inside. We just need to listen to it and not listen to a bunch of external stakeholders that want us dead. Like the system wants us dead. The life expectancy for an American male is shrinking. I hope everyone understands that. Like we ain't getting better. Things are not getting better. Things are getting worse. The more men than ever are killing themselves and more people than ever are overweight and mental health crisis and all of this. This comes from a reliance on a bunch of things that are killing us. And I'm not playing that role anymore. I refuse to be a part of this faceless, soulless death cult with a happy face painted on it. I won't. And I appreciate you for giving folks like me a platform to speak on this because people need to wake up and understand that their life is worth more than some pleasure. Like people think their life is worth more than the feeling they get when eat a donut or sleep with a stranger or, you know, use drugs or drink alcohol. Like that's outrageous. You are a brute creature like are you that limited i was so limited in in what i thought my life was worth an unending unceasing chase of pleasure like that is absurd that's a base animalistic thing that the release of dopamine our lives are worth everything and we treat our most people treat them like they're worth nothing it's horrible yeah i mean what you're saying too is like there's there's like two ways you can go you can go the wrong way or the right way, <laughs> you know? 
And I feel like you just have to continue to live your life to find out which one's the wrong way, which one's the right way for you. 100%, but most people are living somebody else's life. That's the big tragedy. Yeah. If you're out here doing you, you're not doing you. You're not doing yourself or your people any favors. If you are actually living your life in congruence with your conscience, that's the most noble thing a man can do. And if you wake up every day and listen to that voice inside that calls you to do whatever that is, and I can't speak to say what that is, but I can tell you exactly what that isn't and what that isn't is being disgusted with your body. What that isn't is using a bunch of nasty stuff to make you feel some type of way. What that isn't is disliking your family and running away from your people. Like all that stuff is not the right way. I know it because I did it. I'm only ever going to speak on what I have done. I can't teach the listeners how to replace their carburetor. I'm not gonna be able to give a sermon on astrophysics. I don't know how to make a souffle. Like there are certain things in my life I have done and there's proof of them on my page on IG at NYC Foodways. You can see the man I was. You can see the man I am now, and you can see exactly what it took for me to get there because I break it down every day on my stories. And it's not complicated. It is a consistent early wake-up time. It is daily physical exercise based on the user's ability. Like when I started, I couldn't do 10 push-ups, okay? Mm -hmm. So people don't need to trip and think I'm sort of some sort of gym bro. Take a look, just look at my before picture. What physical ability did that man have? I was over 190 pounds with almost no muscle. So people really need to, fall back and understand what change is possible. And the third thing is intentional nutrition. That's the most important part. That's why I'm food waste coaching because a foodway is a cultural pathway through food. And our system, our country's pathway through food is broken. It's dreadful. And I'm here to change that. You know, with all of my clients get custom recipes, they get fitness plans tailored to their ability. They have 24-7 access to me because this road is not easy, but it's far easier than the other road. And it depends on what people want. If you want to be like everyone else and have everyone else's problems and are okay with being anxious, depressed, and or overweight, then continue to walk that path. And if you want to be on this side, living a righteous example, a real sober, clean, clear-eyed example, then walk this path. And you're not going to walk alone. There are other people on my program. You have me, of course. And it's just about being honest. If you are truly honest, no man who is truly honest would, would say they would rather be out of shape than in shape. No man who is truly honest is okay with being hungover. People want to lie and they want to front and they want to say that it's all good and that that Mac lifestyle, that pimp lifestyle, being at the club, smoking and drinking and doing whatever they want is the way to go. And that is soul death. And ultimately, it will lead to death. And you got bars today, man, but I, I feel what you're saying because it goes back to the topic of what we're uh, talking about, transforming who you are by transforming what you do because... Like you said, the before and after picture of your process of what you chose to do in a period of time, it led you to your results. So in that sense, that's all facts. Over time, you make all these choices and leads you to the end product of whatever comes from those choices. So it's like a person I had on recently, they were talking about, you know, every day is their shot, you know. It's not like they never had a shot. You get one every day, <laughs> you know, until you get your last breath. You, you get the opportunity to set something in motion, whether it's positive or negative. So if you don't believe in yourself, well, then you're going, that's going to be your answer. You believe every in yourself, then that's your answer. And every like, time. And real quick, like you said moments ago, it's not like you're going to do something and then poof, your life is like, perfect and everything works out for you and you're just getting all these handouts. Nah, it's a grind. Every day is a grind, but you get to choose how you write that story. Yeah. And it's most attractive to people who have lived dark. You know, those that have had like a real sweet existence, like cupcake existence, never really dealt with much adversity, whether it be external or internal like mine, this isn't for them. They can keep on going about their cupcake soft existence and i wish them the best of luck they're never going to understand what it's like to fight but if you really have to fight if you've really been through stuff if you really have to struggle it is a real struggle like an existential dread that's in your heart and soul and you have to make the choice whether you want to live with that or you're willing to fight it you know i always say that the war is not necessarily ever won but it guarantee to be lost if we don't fight. Like if you don't fight in the war against your own mind, you are going to lose it automatically. But if you show up every day and fight, you at least have a chance. And that's the gospel I preach.
That's good. Man, that's good. Uh, on that note, we've been talking to John Katz. And if someone wants to reach out to you and check out your program, because you got a YouTube channel, you got, you know, Instagram, all that good stuff. What's the call to action that you give to our audience? Check me out at NYC Foodways on IG. That's NYC F O O D W A Y S. Break it down real simple. Shoot me a message if you're struggling with anything. Just understand that I have been through the darkness and there is no light without darkness. What is to give light must endure burning and we are all in this together. Man, on that note, man, that was good. That was a good like wrap up right there. So definitely uh, check out what John Cash is doing. Support what he does. Once again, I want to say thank you for your time, man. My pleasure.